Coming to you from sunny California and the Great White North. Get ready. We are breaking down the obstacles on the Armchair Ninja Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Armchair Ninja Podcast. It is Thursday, December 29th, 2016. My name is Rich, and joining me for this review of 2016 is Bajan. How are you making out? What up? I'm ready, bro. Let's do this. I am so psyched. This is going to be a fun episode. I hope it oh, is anyway. It's going to be it's going to be a hot freaking mess in all the best ways. I'm so excited. So, uh, why don't you give them a rundown, my man? All right. So, what we're going to do is we're going to run through what's happened with the podcast and A&W in 2016. We are going to do a National Ninja League review of the ATP qualifier that is the atomic training and performance in Fort Lauderdale Florida Florida and we are gonna do some ninja announcements and uh one little difference about this episode but John do you want to do you want to spoil what's going on (laughs) oh man so we're gonna start a little tradition here guys um for the new year's episode we're gonna get a little tipsy you know um there's kids around this might be the episode you might they might want to skip so we're gonna have some fun tonight guys we're just gonna lay out we're gonna recap all the the rest of the year or yeah last year and we are going to drink while doing it have some fun games also uh maybe answer some fan questions it's gonna be dope man and whoo how many shots are you in my man I am seven shots in at this point, which was probably a really bad idea because I started yep. before you got home. So it, it hasn't been uh, hasn't been a great start to the night. And this is a Tuesday. We are recording on a Tuesday. I am home alone and I am drunk and it is all Bajan's fault. Yeah. Like, what are we doing with our lives, man? Like, it, it, for f- to, to clarify for everybody, th- this is what I did. I just worked out for two hours and did literally 300 sit-ups at the gym. And I came home and I ate 15 greasy freaking chicken wings and <laughs> took four shots in a row. What the hell is wrong with me? What am I doing with my life? And you know <laughs> what, my man? We, I got the video shot for you right now. Cheers to you, my man, on air. We're about to take two shots. So let's do this. I got my fireball all ready to go. We're whisking it up. Ooh, oh, boy. So, Lego. Shot number, what, five? I'll join you for number six. Oh, God. That's brutal. Uh, yeah, for those that don't know, we actually do not record uh, through video. Normally, we're just audio only. Bijan is on video. He is going uh, all out this time. So we're oh. going to do what we can to... Uh, sweating. To keep I'm it light. sweating. <laughs> <laughs> so we are still going to be clean, just to be clear. We are not still going to be uh, keeping our rating here. So we will. Yeah, yeah. there will be no swearing or anything, but we'll... Uh, we're going to try to have some fun. I will try my best. That's all I could say. Yeah. And I edited it afterwards. So even if there is a little swearing, we'll, we'll edit it out. Or we'll oh, there you it, go. Leave it wherever go. we got. All right. John, they don't care. They want, they want to hear us take another shot. So let's do it. All right. Let's go. Shot number six. Lego. Ah. Ugh. And just to explain to everybody, I have no chaser here. Oh, my God. That bird's. <sighs> <clears throat> I'm not drinking cinnamon whiskey here. Oh, you you call me out on my cinnamon whiskey? What, what is that? Little Fireball, little bit, bomb, little, dude. <laughs> Fireball. Oh, oh, millennials. What is you old grin, grizzled <laughs> veterans? All right, let's go into the uh, first first uh, thing, man. All right, so what are we doing? First thing off the bat, I went back and I listened to our first episode of 2016. I thought, you know, what what were we doing at the beginning of 2016? Because I wasn't even sure, really. We I honestly were, don't remember. <laughs> yeah, we were reviewing Team Ninja Warrior. We hadn't even listened to it yet or watched it yet. Oh, this shot is burning. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so we hadn't even watched it as of yet. And what's funny is right off the bat, the very first thing that I do is make, make a mistake on the very first episode of the season. I say, Welcome to the Armchair Ninja Podcast. It is January, blah, 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 January 6, 2015. Like, I screwed up uh, on the first sentence of the whole year. So the first thing I noted actually wasn't even the mistake. It was our intro, because at the beginning of the year, our intro was completely different. Oh, it was so bad. <laughs> I didn't know how like, bad I it was be, until I, I heard really it again. I really wanted to be nice to you, bro, but it was so bad. <laughs> 
So here's the thing. So when you when you start a new podcast and you're looking for an intro, the options are not that great. It's not like you're going to go out and grab some, you know, Jay-Z or whatever. You're not going to pick something that everybody knows. Jay-Z would be dope. <laughs> you're gonna Just go saying. Pick, <laughs> you got to pick something that's free, basically. Like So I went browsing and that's what I found. It was quirky. It was weird. I kind of liked it. And uh, yeah, it, you were it listening just to the Armchair Ninja podcast. Yes, this totally the... fits the theme of our podcast. Yeah, <laughs> BS, bro. That was terrible. <laughs> okay, so when it was the two of us, that did not fit it at all. When it was just me <laughs> talking, be my boring self, then yeah, it was fine. But yeah, with the British lady coming in, you're listening to the Armchair Ninja podcast. <laughs> Here's your host, Rich. Um, and yeah, your name wasn't even included at that point, so. Uh, I'm glad we've got it revised. She would never be able to pronounce my name correctly. It's all good. No <laughs> chance. <laughs> but I think it's great. I love it. And you know what the great thing about it is that Jeff Britton has actually helped us pick it out. Oh, yeah, that's right. He, he helped us uh, choose a new one, right? Yes, he did. How yeah, cool I remember that? like you had like uh, three or four different uh, options. And we were like, <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of weird because we're like, oh, we're recording with Jeff Britton. And you're like. Yo, want to help us choose these things? And where we spend like like ten minutes listening to a bunch of music, and we're all like trying to decide. <laughs> I remember uh, I wanted the more hip hop heavy one, and he wanted the more like chill one, and we, we uh, settled with the one we got. You know, it was a uh, it was fun. I think you realize. I think you liked the one that we picked in the end. So it, oh, it worked I like. We both liked it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very happy with it. So I liked um, it because it's got a bass drop at the end. You know. <laughs> yeah, I actually kind of. Uh, I don't know if people realize this. So I took the original and I skewed it. It wasn't, it's not unedited. I actually took it and I, I take it from a low volume to a high volume to the whole thing. So I actually take some, I did a little bit of editing on it just to make sure it, uh, it came out the way they want. Like the big bass drop. I love it coming in nice. and big, heavy, like boom. I, no complaints here, bro. Uh, so yeah, we had Jeff Britton on the podcast this year. That like, It's crazy. When looking back, I'm trying to figure out who's been on the podcast this year we've had jeff Britton, we've had brian arnold co-hosting when you were out jesse graff joined joined us at one point and matt eisman uh came in at the end of the year and and this is from a podcast that we do not we're not an interview podcast it was just no coincidental uh, actually we batted like 50 50 with uh or with the oh god <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry <laughs> swiskey's like hello welcome back um <laughs> Yeah, we, we batted like 50-50 with, uh, we call it issues, you know, recording with the interviews. If Like, I know a lot of fans always ask you, me, us, like, why don't we do more interviews? And trust me, we get a lot of insight from uh, different Ninja Warriors wanting to be on the show. But, man, we, you know, we got to get uh, a hold of, like, how we're figuring out our audio issues. Because um, I, I think the one that kind of scarred Rich for life is the Jesse Graff interview, you know. We've never felt so bad for an interview <laughs> And Jesse Graff, she was an amazing trooper just dealing with all the BS that happened um, for that interview. We had a lot of audio issues, but she was awesome. Yeah, yeah. So one thing, um, you yeah, know, one thing after another with that one, it was my internet cut out for a while. It was all on my end. That was the worst part of it. It's one thing when it's, you know, if it's on the other end that you kind of don't feel as bad, but it was all me, mm -hmm. like 100%. My internet was cutting out. And then we had, once I get that straightened out, there were other issues and in the end my <laughs> we haven't reviewed i don't think we've revealed this on the podcast before i actually lost the end of the interview like it was the worst feeling in the world to look and realize that it hadn't recorded the last bit of our conversation yeah and it I was like ter- almost like all like a good majority of all the fan questions like we covered like <laughs> and i've never felt so bad in my life but um at the in the end, it still came out to be a good um, interview and everything. And Jesse Graff was super awesome. She's still a good friend of ours. You know, we still keep in touch and everything. Um, we'll definitely have her back most likely in 2017 if she's up for it. And I, I don't see why she wouldn't be unless she hates us for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> After that interview, I don't know. I know you're like, ah, oh, screw those guys. Yeah, they <laughs> but um, yeah, it'll be fun times. And um, you know, as I said, we, we've made amazing fr um, friends, you know, along the way in terms of the ninja community um, on and off, you know, um, Joe Morosky, your friend and that guy, you know, he's dope and a lot of other people. And I, I think we're going to make um, I don't know about you, Rich, but I am down to make a, a good shot at, or uh, 
I, I'm willing to risk it more of doing a, a few more interviews next year, especially because I have a backup program now. So if Rich something happens from Rich's side, we will have a backup. Um, so therefore, we can get the audio to you guys. Yeah, it makes me lo- feel a little better knowing that there is a second copy going. And even now, my uh, my copy is going, but I don't trust it. I, I've got like my eyes on it all the time now. Like I don't trust that it's working. <laughs> After that, that was that was the worst feeling in the world. Because can you imagine, like you you put your heart and soul into this thing, and and you've got somebody that you were waiting to talk to for so long, and you record it, and everything's great, and then you look and it's gone. It's just absolutely gone, and you have no way to recover it. And the episode itself actually came out okay, only because Jesse is such as we've said over and over again, such a trooper. She stuck with us for two nights, and I had so much. Uh, so much footage. I don't know what you call it, audio footage, eh, whatever. I had so content, much my man. content that I was able to piece together an episode, and it was complete. It wasn't even in order. It was it was a complete mess. It took forever to edit, but um, it was worth it in the end because uh, she's just such a great interview. Yeah, I've never felt so bad for a person in my life. Like I was trying to be so nice to Rich because I'm like I like there was no point for me to beat him up. Like I already knew he was beating himself up way more than anybody else would. I was like, dude, it's okay, man. Like <laughs> just put together what you got. It's all good, you know. You know, we also love you and everything. But guys, this guy takes it really to heart. Yeah, I felt super bad for him. <laughs> you know what's funny? What made me feel better than anything is one of my favorite podcasts. Um, is actually called Sick Boy. And I don't know if I've promoted them on here before. Uh, it's from my region uh, of the world. And they they were recently talking about their year and stuff. And they had lost three episodes through the year. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, God. Oh, I, I can't even imagine. I lost half of an episode and it, it was about killed me. I can't imagine losing an entire episode, let alone three. I'm gearing up my next shot, my man. Each topic, <laughs> I'm going to take a shot. In this episode, I'm just going to be comatose, guys. <laughs> All right. Ooh. That's brutal. Yeah, um, overall, though, I really enjoyed all of our interviews. But more more importantly, not even the interviews. Um, like, screw all that. The behind-the-scenes just communication we've had and the inside and openness with all the ninjas has absolutely been amazing. Like, uh Noah Kaufman in particular, an amazing guy. And, uh, you know, there was so many other people that just um, reached out to us every week, you know, just talking to us behind the scenes, giving us a lowdown of what was really going on. You know, it was dope and it was amazing and it was an absolute privilege to be able to communicate with them and also kind of represent their thoughts and feels um, behind the microphone. Uh, Yeah, overall, shout out. And I don't want to reveal because I don't want to give up too much with the will it happen or not but something big was going to happen this year guys and i am still fighting new like tooth and nail um to get this to happen next year where it will be one of the biggest things for the entire ninja community and uh the thing is is that all the top ninjas were definitely down including matt eisman and everybody else and i appreciate their support with it and trust me i will continue fighting to make it happen we were so close and at the last minute it didn't come together but next year man i'm gonna fight i am going to fight so hard i think we can make it happen and you know what's funny is i think we actually did talk about it on the podcast so we uh what bajan's referring to i'm assuming is the san diego comic-con right Mm-hmm. yeah yeah so we we tried to make that happen we were so hopeful we had gone through the whole process but john was driving that uh being in san diego we were approved like we were chosen and everything and then at the last minute um they had to do last minute cuts because there were too many uh television uh what do you call it um panels happening and comic-con san diego comic-con is a little weird where they want to keep the movies and the television to a certain level so they kept it at uh 11 for television in terms of the panels and they were at 13 percent. and since we were one of the new ones we got the shaft because of seniority rights you know so next year you know i'm gonna fight and make sure that it happens trust me san diego comic-con was down to have it and um yeah, it was just, you know, some political BS at the last minute, but we'll see next year. Yeah, I th- I'm pretty hopeful for, for that. I mean, a has grown over the past year. As much as it seemed like it might have been peaking with the whole Jeff and Isaac controversy and all that was going on, I really feel like Jesse ha- 
Graf has brought like a whole new level of attention to the show and to the sport. And I feel like this is our year. Like we're going to make it happen. 2017 is the year of the ninja. Mm-hmm. She's like uh, the Ronda Rousey of a, uh, well, that's, I, I don't know. Anyways, uh, <laughs> she <laughs> could be good. maybe the, the Ronda Rousey of a, uh, that's a decent comparison. We'll see. Sure. Yeah. I, I'm all on board for that. I, I really think that's, that's not that, far off right like she has brought a level of attention to the sport that hasn't been there in the past almost like you know a Casey, Casey did Zorro, you know share share some of that acclaim you know you yeah gotta, like as much as people try to hate on her I don't think enough people realize just what Casey Kenanzaro has also done for the sport oh 100% we've, we've gone over that 100 times like yeah. uh, we love Casey both of us do yeah. and, and you know ha- what now that I think about it you know uh sorry to cut you off man just very short um because this guy gets a lot of hate and I understand it and, you know, I, I, I you know, I'll, I'll keep my personal opinions to it to a minimum. But I think both Isaac Caliero and Jeff Britton also deserve a lot of credit, um, especially Isaac Caliero. Like, well, say what you want, but he is the guy that was on the forefront of all of the media and everything, all the attention with Ninja Warrior when um, he did win. And um you know, I, I feel like this past year, if we're doing a recap, he's gotten a lot of hate and say what you want about it. But he he does share some, you know, um, gratitude in terms of bringing some some light to the sport. Obviously, Jeff Britton's kind of like the people's champion. But Isaac Caldero, he for various aspects have been has been a little too much demonized over the past year. Yeah, I disagree completely. I think he fully warrants all the demonization we give him. I think he uh, <laughs> he totally has brought it on himself. I think the guy, um, and not to you know burn those bridges. I mean, if we could have him on the show, maybe there's we... no bridge. So <laughs> yeah. you know what? If if there was a chance to have him on the show, we probably would. But at the same time, I feel like Isaac won something that was seen seen as impossible right he did something that was amazing you know not to take away from that at all 100 percent, the guy is absolutely phenomenal for what he accomplished as is jeff but when you think about it take another ninja and put them in that position we take um and this isn't really 2016 stuff this is more 2015 but just to kind of wrap it up in 2016 though yeah a little bit i guess um but you've got to figure that if you put Drew in that position or if you put Grant or, I don't know, mm-hmm. Daniel or somebody that is charismatic and, um, and you know, very supportive of the community. Well, let's just say Brian Arnold because he, Brian Arnold will be probably the closest to Isaac Cadiero. Right? Sure. Yeah, Brian's a great example. So if Brian mm-hmm. had managed, you know, he was not that far from it. Uh, in season six, five, five. Yeah. Those slurs. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> in season five, if Brian had managed it, um, he would have been all about, you know, propping up the rest of the ninja community. He would have been talking about how great it is and how, and he would have been everywhere. He would have seen him on the Today show. You would have seen him promoting ninja, ninja everywhere. Mm-hmm. Isaac didn't do that. Cause Isaac was like, Nah, whatever. I'm just gonna bail out. You know what? You, you bring up a good point. Um, the argument I'm trying to make is more, I guess, from NBC standpoint because they used him as a prop to uh, make the show stronger. I guess in many ways. But you do bring up a really good point, and um, I, I don't know because the thing is, is that I want to respect a lot of uh, the ninjas' opinions because, um, as we said, guys, there's a lot of stuff that we hear behind the scenes, and there's a lot of. There's a lot of dirt that's, you know, we've heard from about Isaac Caudiero, but unless I hear it from his mouth, I don't want to say it on on the record. Um, so all I'll say is that there are certain things and certain rumors about the guy, but, you know, he's kind of been MIA for a while, and I don't know. I want to I wanna at least give, it's, it's kind of like the Kanye West argument where it's like, oh, public image, oh boy, but his music's dope. So it's, it's kind of like that, where it's like, <laughs> I have to respect Isaac Caudiero for what he's done. But, yeah, he, he could have done better in terms of, uh, you know, being whatever you want to call me. Damn sure I ain't the first American Ninja Warrior, because that's Jeff Britton. I'll, I'll say that to the, to the day I die. But <laughs> he'll be the first champion or whatever you want to call it. The Kanye West of Ninja Warrior. I love it. That is a perfect example. That is that is exactly how I feel about him, because I can't 
I can't stomach Kanye, frankly, because <laughs> that whole that whole Taylor thing, I will never forgive that. Look, that is just somebody that's ego is way too big for for what they're doing. Like you, you yeah, sing yeah. for a living. Get over yourself. Yeah. All right, we're going off topic. Let's. Uh... <laughs> oh, 100 percent. Yeah, this will all be edited out. I'm sure. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm looking at the list and I'm like, oh my god, we, this is gonna be a long ass podcast. <laughs> oh yeah, all right. <clears throat> Get transition here. Uh... Well, transition will be Bretta. It is time to switch over to the next topic. But before we do that, time for shot number. Oh, what the hell is it? Seven? It's seven, right? Oh jeez. Oh, for god, you, this might die. be seven. I'm like eight. Ugh. Whatever. I, I weigh 150 pounds, so yeah. that's my excuse. Okay. <laughs> Shot number seven. Do it. Ugh. Oh, God. Yeah, I'm not going to be feeling well in, <laughs> in a while, probably. <laughs> a, Wednesday, uh, a Wednesday morning hangover is not a good thing. Yeah. All right, I got to point out hey, for a quick part, second favorite here. favorite podcasters are drunks, apparently, out of nowhere, like... <laughs> When, when did we become Alkies, man? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm all about health. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> so one of the biggest things for A&W for us this year has to have been going to see it live, in person. So for me, that was like life-changing. I can't, I will never forget that. How, how was your experience, if you could sum it up? It was dope. I mean, uh... You know, I I was kind of like opposite of you in the, in the fact that I think you were like you know wanting to be in front of all the ninjas, you know, communicate, be in front of the crowd and everything. I was like, I'm just gonna be here, go in the back and do my own thing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but but all the ninjas I interacted with, um, they were amazing people. The the thing that stood out to me was how incredibly kind they were. There were n- there was not a single person, and they didn't know who I was at this point because I was super inconspicuous. I wasn't like, "Yo, I'm B. Jam from the Armchair Ninja Podcast." Blah blah blah. I was like, "Hey, I'm some random dude. What's up?" Um, and they were the most down to earth people. They really gave their time, just talk and everything. Really awesome. I want to give a special, special shout out to Brent Stephenson. Um, he was not only awesome to me, but the entire, entire night. He was communicating with all the fans, really taking his time to just make everybody feel at ease and feel like they're, they're friends. I mean, um, oh, God. <laughs> oh. <coughs> okay. Um, <laughs> oh, that was fun. Um what was I talking about? Brent Stevenson. Yeah. Dope dude. And, um, want to give a special shout out to him. Um, he was so incredibly awesome. And, um, yeah, the one thing that stood out to me was a lot of these Ninja Warriors on the television show that you kind of see as like big guys. They're, uh, they're a lot smaller than, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm 5'11". I like, I am whatever, you know, but, um, let's just say I very much was taller than a lot of these guys <laughs> and gals. Yeah, I feel like a lot of the ninjas are actually on the smaller side, you know, you know, probably average, you know, five, five, ten range, but some of them are even shorter than that. And at five, these, six, these, the people I met were not five, ten. Yeah. <laughs> Since I'm five, six, they all look like giants to me. So whatever. <laughs> these guys, what, but I, you went first, right? You went to go see this live first. So I was kind of, my man expectations were set by you as to you know i thought you know there'll be some people that'll be interacting with the crowd as you went on about you know brent being so great at doing that uh and jesse as well i believe he said was really good oh at yeah talking jesse was dope yeah so i was kind of on the lookout for who's who's interacting who's not everybody was everybody was fantastic i have i have never seen anything like it so i i got to see matt eisman and and Akbar, who are in the middle of doing their job, right? And whatever else you consider this, that is their job to be up there doing this commentary. And yeah, every the time, the closest that, people that you can say to be celebrity and like be too good to talk to whoever, it would be them too, right? Right, you would think so. But they were so not that. Every time they came down from the, up on their their pedestal, <laughs> literally, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> every time they came down. They were ta- interacting with the crowd. They were talking to people. They were they were constantly um, barraged by people who are trying to get their attention and talk to them, get their autograph, get their pictures taken with them. And they never stopped. From the time I got into the line to get into the place, there were ninjas coming by the lines to, with the crowd and taking photos of everybody. It was the most fantastic um, 
it was just very, very rewarding and very, um, it reassured me that this is the best sport on the planet. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I, I think the thing that is so huge and so important with this community and the sport is that everybody is so down to earth and so, um, invested in just like com- kind of the camaraderie that we always talk about. That's kind of why, um, you know, a certain person gets a bad rap is because, you know, the sport's so much about camaraderie and everybody's in it together. And you like nothing exemplifies that more than seeing this um, in person and seeing it live and seeing all the ninjas interacting not only with the crowd, but each other trying to figure it out, giving each other tips and pointers. Everybody and when, when somebody's doing well, you see all of the ninjas cheering on and so excited. It, it's not BS that you sh- like it, it's not what you see on TV is like, oh, they just fake that. No, it's like real. These people are so excited for everybody. And um, it was really, really cool to see. Um, all I got to say is if you can, guys, to make it a point to at least go one time live. It, it's really dope. And it was an amazing experience. I'll never forget. And yeah, lucky for me, LA is uh, next year, <laughs> so I can go to it again. <laughs> yeah, I got to. We want to skip ahead to that uh, a little bit. So they did actually announce the uh, qualifying. Oh, we, cities. We're, we're going to the next topic. Yeah, sure. Why Rich, not? It sounds like numero ocho for me, <laughs> dude. Like, like I, I don't know. You want to be careful there. You're trying to catch up. Hashtag off. Alki. I am going to die tonight. <laughs> <laughs> kids do not drink just don't do, do not it drink. do not drink as fast as Bajan cheers cheers Ugh. oh All that right. wasn't bad That that's kind of scary um, it's getting to the point where it kind of tastes like spicy water okay that's, <laughs> that's not good but you know whatever moving on <laughs> moving on we've got the sixth qualifying city so um before We'll kind of loop back, I guess, to the the review, but I want to kind of mention, so they actually have announced the qualifying cities for this coming year. We have Los Angeles, California, March 7th and 8th, San Antonio, Ooh. Texas, March 26th, 27th, Daytona, Florida, April 27th, sorry, April 7th and 8th, Kansas City, Missouri, April 24th, 25th, Cleveland, Ohio, May 8th and 9th. Denver, Colorado, May 23rd and 24th. And the finals are taking place in Las Vegas, June 18th to 24th. You know, all those uh, cities are actually really do- like good. I have no complaints. I understand a lot of people in the uh, Northeast are, you know, there- there's nothing like really for people that are like super Northeast. But overall, those are very big cities and, you know, they're, they're diversifying. I can't complain about it. I can. I totally can because I think I, I'm. I know you can. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's a whole lot of people complaining. It's just me, probably, because I, you know, my my U.S. geography isn't that great, so I didn't realize how close um, Cleveland, Ohio, actually is relatively close to me. It's not too much further than Philadelphia, but that's the one I was thinking about. I'm like, yeah, Cleveland, Ohio, you know, but <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that's still a 14, 15 hour drive from here, so it's still a bit much, dude. If it's past nine hours, you better fly. <laughs> Make your life easy. I mean, I drove. I drove two days. I drove two days to get to Philly. I'll do it for to Denver, probably, or sorry, Cleveland, probably. But but why? That is that is painful. <laughs> it depends on how many people you're dragging in your vehicle, whether it's worth well, that's it or a good not. Point, I guess. Yeah, if you're, if you're taking the family, yeah, but. If it's just me, oh I'm flying. Well, you enjoy that. If it's you just me, I enjoy that. I was complaining about my two hour drive to L.A. Uh, I guess I can't talk. I I don't I will drive a day for sure, but we're looking at a two day drive at this point. Really, I don't know if I can do uh, the Cleveland one a one day drive. So it all depends. My wife's all excited because the the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is in Cleveland. So maybe we'll end up making that drive. We'll see. It's all you, man. Just saying. Stop by L.A. I mean, you can uh, join a uh, you know stop by a Ninja Gym. Put uh, those pointers down, <laughs> dude. I, you know I, what? I'll I will take your butt to a Spartan race. That'll be amazing. <laughs> amazing. Amazing to see somebody fail a quarter of the way through the course. It really. <laughs> oh, that'd be the greatest thing ever, man. <laughs> oh, man. We're, we are so far away at times. It, it just feels like way too far. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, really, I was really on the verge of going. When we talked about doing the uh, 
the Comic Con thing, I was like, you know what? I've got to find a way. There's got to be a way for me to get there, and I probably well, well, that would be a reason to do it, bro. Like that, that would definitely be a reason. Yeah. So maybe this year, maybe this will be the year we'll actually get to meet in person. I find it so funny that Jesse Graff is the only person that's met us both in person. Yeah, true. That that is the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so if you look back, so getting away from the qualifiers, back to our review of 2016, uh, one of the biggest things for me, and it was weird, it was, it, it was not a, a hallmark moment, I guess, but at the same time, it was kind of for me, was Thrillist.com reached out to us to, for an article, um, like the top 10 moments of A&W, like we were recognized as kind of an expert in the field, that was really cool. Well, we are experts in the field, my man. What are you trying, what are you trying to say? We are. <laughs> we pretend to be. We certainly pretend no, to of be. Of course. But <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, it was it was definitely dope. Um, big props to you, Rich, for uh, you know spearheading that whole thing, and you made an amazing article. I gotta say, you know, not to you know uh, gloat about you know the person that I co-host this show, but like rich really did an amazing job i really thoroughly enjoyed that article and um i think a lot of other people did from the feedback that i got i'm glad you liked it i I was really kind of i was a little torn on it because i was on the road i was actually on my way to philly when they wanted it and they wanted it basically before i get back so i really had to write it on the road on my phone for the most part it was a very very hard article to write but uh no, I was happy with it came out, how it came out in the end. I wish it could have could have gained a little more attention. It's hard. I, I'm not good at grabbing the sensational headlines, right? Like you got to kind of have to you have to poke some uh, some sore spots to get get the attention. I think. I feel you. Yeah, I think I should have went with like the top ten villains of A and W or something. <laughs> that would be a fun article. Hey, maybe next time, man. I'm actually thinking that's a great article. I should have wrote that article. I'm going to write that one next time. Yeah. Yeah. Ready for uh, A&W Nation, man. There we go. Top 10 villains of A&W. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, so l- let's talk about actually A&W 8. So we're talking talking about the uh, the big stories. Who The biggest story of A&W 8 has to be Jesse beating both the Wedge and Stage 1. Like, how, how do you not? This was the year of the woman, really. It was. It was. Um, the thing that stood out to me more than anything else was... At this point, it was no longer such a story of, oh, my God, a woman can do this. You know, that was kind of like the Casey Catanzaro story, which wasn't a problem for me at all. But it was more of a woman at the size can do this and how amazing that was Um, and how easy she made it look. I mean, say what you want, but she made it look easy. Um, Jesse Graff excelled expectations in the fact that she she attacked a course that was so incredibly revered at the time. If you guys look back at the LA qualifiers, nobody got as far as she did when she reached that point. And um, only one other person got farther than her. And it was such an amazing, I guess, achievement for not only women, but just a competitor in general. You know, if she was a man, it would still be just a huge uh, achievement. And, it, it, it helped the fact that not only was it uh, a woman and all this stuff, but it was Jesse Graff, a woman that for so many years, a lot of people have said she is the future of women's ninja warrior. Like uh, she, she, her and Megan Martin in particular were such revered competitors that were so incredibly strong. And over the past year, um, which is another story, Rich, but we saw just the kind of like uh, the big meta story of everything in Ninja Warrior of the entire year. It's kind of like the the explosion of women and just how strong they are in general. But Jesse Graff is kind of at the forefront of it. I think she's slightly, and I mean really slightly, um, gone above Megan Martin in the fact that she is at the very peak of uh, Ninja Warrior, especially in terms of uh, women. Um, and you know, it's not a thing where we can say, oh, she did well for women. It's like, oh no, she just did well in general, you know? (laughs) Yeah. And, and that was really cool to see. And, uh, yeah, I'm rambling at this point because I'm drunk, (laughs) but yeah, why don't you go, Brad? (laughs) No, but I, I think you, you nailed it, right? So with Casey, it was a matter of, oh wow, women can do the warped wall. Women can do... Uh, well at this support 
And Jesse proved that they not only can do well, they can compete on the same level. They can they can excel. They can win. They can they can beat the men at this point, right? If they put the the effort in that Jesse has, they can actually show up the men that are there that are competing. So Jesse is absolutely heads above. So in no disrespect to Megan Martin, I actually feel like she doesn't take the sport. It's secondary to her, right? Her climbing is is her primary sport, and Jesse, of course, her stunt, you know, her stunt uh, responsibilities are her number one thing. But I feel like she takes it uh, probably a little more seriously than Megan does. And that's you know, Megan, whatever, like uh, she can compete at that level as an aside, right? She is so good. I that's love the thing. this. Megan Martin is even without whatever you know in terms of um, taking it seriously. Megan Martin is still clearly the number two woman in the sport. Woman in the sport right now. Yeah, good yeah. for her, man. I'm actually re- really interested to see how Jesse Lebrecht can do next year because she was our rookie that, of the year for sure. That is the one, man. Jesse Lebrecht. I, I was about to just bring her up in terms of like the the person that's made such an explosion on um, not only the Ninja Warrior scene but definitely the regional scene with national ninja league man nobody gets closer than jesse lebrecht i mean she is really i i think a lot of people are sleeping her on her from the casual audience she is going to have an explosion next year as long as she stays healthy and she doesn't have too many injuries going into american ninja warrior i am fully confident she is going to do just as well as Jesse Graff and Megan Martin. And I am very um, excited to see what, like how far they can go. That's going to be so fun. Yeah. What's fun. What's great about all three of them. So Megan, Jesse and Jesse, (laughs) the, uh, they all are extremely personable. They all have great stories. They all have like, they're all the complete package, right? Any one of them could be superstars in the sport because they're all fantastic women who are great people, uh, on top of everything else, we've had a chance to talk to Jesse Graff and Megan Martin on the show. Uh, I actually would love to have Jesse Lebrecht on at some point as well. Sounds like we need to hit her up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's totally possible. Yeah, with, with that said, um, in, in terms of the meta story, if, if you want to just get right onto that, um, we, we saw a lot of competitors. There, I think there are two stories as a whole for 2016 in terms of uh, season eight, right? And the two stories are the explosion of women on the scene and how well they did, right? Um, with a, f- I forget if it was three horse women or four horse women, um, you know, from the <laughs> penultimate episode. It was four. I forget. Yeah. It was four. Okay, cool. Four horse women. Um, not only that and Jesse LeBrec and Jesse Grapp, blah, blah, blah. But it was also the explosion of the next generation of Ninja Warriors, right? Uh, you know, the... Oh, my God. What's his name? I'm so drunk. Uh, what's his <laughs> name, man? Uh, you know, I'm talking about uh, Genie Guy. Uh, Thomas Stillings. Thomas Stillings, yeah. Okay. <sighs> we're going to take a shot break, and holy crap, I am... I think we're both placid, right, Rich? Yeah, this is not a good idea. No, it's not. But screw it. Yep. Cheers, Cheers. to uh, drinking at home being whatever you want to call us, Alkies. Tuesday night drunk. Yeah. Numero nueve. Ah. Good stuff, guys. I am drinking Fireball, which is supposed to be spicy <coughs> when it's water. That's not a good. That's not a good sign. Oh <laughs> God. Yo, I think I'm, I'm speaking pretty articulately, though. You know, I'm not. I, I think I'm pretty good. So, whatevs, can handle my stuff. Oh, that was a bad idea. <laughs> oh, oh God, such a bad idea. <laughs> oh my God, that almost uh, came right back up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I think worse than tonight is going to be in the morning. I know that. True that. Ugh, some water here. All right. <clears throat> what the hell were we talking about? I don't even know. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I think we're talking about with a woman, and then I'm like, I don't. You know, the women of A and W, blah 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 blah. All right. <clears throat> so other than, 
Oh, wow. <clears throat> so other than the women of A&W, we had, uh, we had Daniel Gill, who, which, who was our rookie of the year in A&W 7, uh, going f- the furthest. Him and Drew both like dominated. They made it to stage three this year. So that was really cool. As much as we went on about Daniel, it was nice to be, kind of be vindicated in him doing so well this year. Yep. It, not only that, like it was a new age of the. Uh, I mean, I'm, this is a common Sasuke trope in terminology, but it's like the the new um, Ninja Warrior All Stars in many ways. You know, like we we have Daniel Gill, we got uh, all the other young guns. You know, not only that, like Team Ninja Warrior College Madness. Like how many young like future potential um, competitors that we see that are such big fans of the show and it. I, I brought it up in uh, an episode a few episodes. Uh, <laughs> the- what, what's Daniel Gill's fr- um, friend again? <laughs> Thomas Stillings. <laughs> yeah, Daniel Gill, Thomas Stillings, and everything. But it's the new new age of uh, America. <sighs> Killed me now. <laughs> this was your fault. This was your idea. It really is. I can't talk like my my brain. Like I'll, I'll be in a, a conversation, and I. Uh, anyway. uh, yeah. Anyways, um, <laughs> too many, there's too many names for this for us to be doing this. Oh, uh, <laughs> like literally, those are the only two names in my head, and I know there's so many more. And I'm like, I can't even begin. I know there was a guy that did really well in L.A. I can't even begin to <laughs> nasty dude. Like, yeah. <laughs> so there are so many new school. Um, American Ninja Warriors, you know, there's Thomas Gillings, there's Daniel Gill, there's, I forget his name, but from the LA qualifiers, the the NASA guy, you know? Josh um, Levin? Josh Levin, there you go, bro. Uh, I am drunk. So, you know, there's so many new school ninjas, and the thing that they all have in common, and the thing that we've seen in College Ninja Warrior with Team MIT, and uh, all the other people that have become stars from Team Ninja Warrior, or College Madness, is that these competitors are so young. They grew up with American Ninja Warrior. They grew up with Sasuke. They grew up training like a good majority of their life where they are like they go they become 21, get that cutoff point, or you know, are able to, you know, um compete on the show and do so phenomenally well because they've been training for years. It's a complete difference from people like um I don't know, Brent Stephenson, people like that, where it's like, hey, I'm on the show. I need to train. Like, w- like let's let's go, you know? It's um, and, and those are like the top of the heat, you know? Uh, Travis Rosen and all those guys, they, they had to adapt. They had to get ready for all these new obstacles in front of them, and they trained very hard, and they that's how they got to the top of the mountain in terms of the sport. But now we have competitors that have been training since they were like 11, you know, since they were 9. And they are excelling so quickly at this sport, and you are going to see this happen more and more over the next three years. And, and more than that, you know, we've seen it in Sasuke, and we are seeing it already in American Ninja Warrior. And I think that's the other true story of the show, that we, these next few years, we are going to see a takeover of all these young guns and all this young blood just killing it in the sport because they have been training all, like, a good majority of their life. And it is dope to see. And and for for that part also, you know, we got the Drew Dressels, we got all the other guys, the the, the veterans are are holding their own as well. So it's it's kind of fun. Yeah, hundred percent. So I love watching like Daniel and Thomas were like one of the highlights highlights of the season. So we get to see Daniel Gill versus Thomas Stillings became the new uh the new race that we saw for the top time that we used to have with um jeez. <laughs> <laughs> with uh drew and uh flip rodriguez so same idea and it's a new generation i love it and these guys would have been teenagers like you said they would have grown up watching it, american ninja warrior it's crazy to think of but it's we're in season nine now we're going into so if you've been watching it for eight years you started as like a 13 year old you're you're now old enough to compete and we have guys like we saw on A&W College Madness, like Tomas, that are just absolutely killing it. Absolutely flying through the course. And I can't wait Mm -hmm. to see how he can do. Yeah, it's so amazing. And, you know, a a good thing is is that we... I was really... 
I wasn't down, but I was kind of like meh about the prospect of college ninja warrior team, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and and it actually turned out to be really cool in the fact that it introduced a whole variety of potential American Ninja Warriors that are very young, you know. I wasn't expecting them to be that young and that them to be that fresh and we saw all that youthful blood competing in the sport and it was really fun to see and you know, I I'm really really at this point excited to see a lot of these competitors that are like 20, 19 and all that stuff get their shot at American Ninja Warrior and see how far they can go. Tomas in particular and um Amelia Becker, I'm really excited for, and um, Taylor Amon, I think that's her name, right, Rich? Uh, Taylor something, yeah. Taylor's right. Well, it's Amon. Her last name's Amon. So um, I'm, I'm really excited for her as well. I mean, um, I I think with a, a good like few years training, because she's got a pole vaulting background, just like all the top women in the sport, I think she can go very, very far. And and it's fun to see that kind of stuff. Um, I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah, and just to add one more name to that list, Doug Leg. Once we see these, oh yeah, yeah, Doug is fantastic. So all of these shoulders, holy crap! <laughs> yeah, the, the yeah, <laughs> the, the massive dude. <laughs> Every other term I can think of for him is inappropriate for the podcast. Yeah, the guy is huge. <laughs> um, so yeah, watching all these guys and and having and this girl, the two girls, Taylor and Amelia, both seeing them before they hit a and w is fantastic we'll get to see them probably next year maybe the year after and we'll be excited we'll already have that built in we'll we'll know and almost the same way so um kind of circling back a little bit but when we're when i was in philadelphia and i'm watching and i see that uh jesse lebrac is hitting the course i'm telling my daughters like oh my god it's jesse lebrac she won the National Ninja League. She's fantastic. Wait till you see her. I loved having that perspective, and I hope that we're help we're helping to promote that, and that that you all are checking out the National Ninja League week after week because it gives you that preview of people before they hit the course, and you know you're not surprised when Jesse LeBrec hits the course and dominates because you know how fantastic she is before she even competes. Mm-hmm. So, anything else you want to talk about for season eight? Uh, the only other thing I can think of is actually the launch of NW Nation with Nikki Lee taking the helm of this big uh, blog and the whole uh, social media aspect of a and W. I I think it's a fantastic job, and I, I think she's doing a great job at it. Yeah, I love everything about the idea of National... <laughs> <laughs> ah! Deep breath. All right. Come re- on. Re- re- Regroup. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so dry <laughs> ah. this is way yeah. harder than i thought it would be <laughs> <laughs> it really is harder man the the other podcast has to do they make it look sound so easy uh, <laughs> uh. <clears throat> yeah i love everything about um a <laughs> and <laughs> w nation <laughs> i keep saying national ninja league in my head oh my god oh, my god. <laughs> oh f- my life i can't <laughs> all right come on me dad focus focus <laughs> dude yeah i love everything about a w nation i mean nikki lee has done such a phenomenal job with all the articles she's written and just all the the sense of like involving the community you know she's really done deep cuts in in uh per, like getting participants from all different backgrounds and going really in depth with like even the old school stuff with American Ninja Warrior. Um I really like really enjoyed all the articles you've seen and I don't think the the website's gotten enough love, honestly. I think it can it has potential to go blow up way more. So definitely guys, check out anwnation.com. It is an amazing site and Nikki Lee, the the head of the whole thing. Um I remember when the when the um call outs came out or whatever, like the tryouts came out and um we were all like who's going to get it? Who's going to get it? And this Nikki Lee girl gets it and we were like who's that? She has done such an amazing job. I, I can't praise her enough, and the website has been so fun to read. And um, not just that, the community interaction in general has been so fun. Yeah, it's fantastic. So, I mean, we last year 
when we were in the down season, it was really hard to figure out what was going on, right? We had to kind of scrounge the forums. We had to to ask around trying to figure out what was going on. But now we're actually kept really informed and we know, you know, when Sam San is on the Today Show, we know about it immediately because Nikki does such a great job of consolidating all of that for us on AW Nation. And, you know, sometimes I feel like we should probably do more to promote that as well. But at the same time, it feels redundant because I mean, all of you should be following AW Nation. She does uh, a great job. So uh, I know she just listens to the podcast as well. So great job, Nikki, and keep it up. Yeah, and in terms of other things, if anybody's interested, um, the really ge- deep cut websites to hit up in terms of um, interacting with the rest of the Ninja War community that we're very involved with, um, not only a Nation, but also Sasuke Maniac, they are an amazing website, and also Reddit's, both the subreddits of a and and Ninja Warrior. Um, and Sasuke, I, I think so. Ugh. Sasuke might be one of them. No, Ninja Warrior and <laughs> yeah, so A&W. That's the only two I've yeah. got is Ninja Warrior and A&W. I, yeah, yeah. If there's a Sasuke so, one, I'm missing out on it. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's a thing. I think Ninja Warrior is Sasuke. But um, A&W, Sasuke, both subreddits for Reddit, um, they're also amazing. So those four uh, are, are particularly amazing. Of course, Twitter, all that stuff's good. But um, in terms of involving with the hardcore fan base, um, ANWNation.com, Sasuke Maniac Forums, and the subreddits of ANW and Ninja Warrior. All amazing. I want to give a huge thank you to all of them for all their support and um, all the interaction they've given us over the past year. It's been amazing. I love you guys. All right. So I think that's it for our review of 2016. Uh, we've had a fantastic year. I know Bijan actually had some uh, some games planned here, some twenty question style things. So, oh snap, guys! So hit me up here. Now, what do you got? So we are going to do a little thing called American Ninja Warrior twenty questions. Okay, so due to the length of the recording, this episode was going to be approximately two and a half hours long, which is just too much, I think. So we're going to leave it here. We're going to have our first two-part episode. Uh, And I hope you're enjoying it. If you are, please let us know. Uh, Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Leave us a rating review. And if you'd like to reach out to us, you can reach me at rich at ninjapodcast.com and at ninjapodcast on both Twitter and Instagram. And Bijan, as always, is at uh, Bijan151. So thank you all for listening, and I hope you have a great week.